How's it, everybody? It is 5 p.m. Sunday afternoon, West Coast time, 3 p.m. on the islands, and 8 p.m. over there on the East Coast. It is time for Chatter with Statter, and I want to thank you all for joining me here live on Twitch. And if you're watching the rerun on YouTube, don't forget to click that like button. All righty then, let's get it started. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I hope that everyone had their happy holiday and are recovering from whatever festivities that may have come their way yesterday. Looks like Kenny from the Cove is in the house. Hey, how's it, Kenny? Good to see you here. All right. You know what? Before I forget to do what I always forget to do, let's do it. All right. Get that. <clears throat> get that music started. And hopefully the audios of the music versus my mic are good. And if we need adjustments, please let me know. Hey, Rick, good to see you. All right. I'll bet you Darlene's somewhere within arm's reach or maybe not. Maybe she's busy doing the dishes or something like that. But you know what? I know that you must have had a good um a good holiday because Darlene, my goodness, and made sure everybody is uh, fed with the tastiest of treats. I have no doubt in my mind. Hey there, Elaine. Good to see you. I'm glad that everyone is starting to roll on in. I'm not sure um, if today, hey, Bacola Tea, happy Boxing Day. Yes, it is Boxing Day, something that we don't really celebrate too much in the United States. In fact, I went and looked it up Um because I was thinking about talking about it a little bit. Then I started reading about it and was like, oh, I don't really know if I like this. So apparently Boxing Day was a day when um, all of the rich people like gave their leftovers to their servants. And I don't know, it's a very classist sort of um, holiday. I guess in theory it's a nice, it's, it's nice, um... It's nice in theory, but when you, like, read into the history of it, it's sort of just like, huh, what a very British thing to do. I don't know. It just, um, <laughs> I can't remember the exact details of it, but the more I read about it, the more I was like, wow, that's long and complicated and, well, very British. Um, excellent. Oh, that's right, Rick. You had the Christmas breakfast with two of the grandkids missing the other three till next weekend. Well, that's okay. Got to spread it out, right? Right. Exactly. Um... Right, Pocola tea, exactly, perfect way to put a rather upstairs, downstairs kind of holiday. That is exactly it. Oh, excellent, Darlene has snuck into the house as well. Fantastic. So, um, I'm not really sure. Oh, hey, yes, and where coming in from the Discord puzzle room. I was, um, I was over there trying to help out solve the surfing puzzle not too long ago before my stream. And um, instead of doing what I should have been doing, which was prepping for my stream, because I have literally, I've, I've nothing. I have I've nothing. So we're going to just have to play this one by ear, um, going, you know, flying by the seat of our pants. It looks like Devin has snuck in, which is fantastic. Um, and Thomas the Turtle also exiting that Discord puzzle room to come in here. So, um, yeah, you know, Pocola Tea, I don't know what's going on with the buffering. I don't have my alternate um, page up, so I guess we're gonna do <sighs> we're gonna do our usual tech check, um, y'all. So the gear is there now. If you click on the gear, um, uh, are we able to downgrade our our situation, or are we stuck at the 720? I hope that we're able to downgrade. I know that last night on Satterbox at the cinema we had the option to downgrade. But that doesn't mean we get it today. And let's see here. Um, E-Music, hello. Good to see you coming on in. And um, you're exactly right, Anne. Doing those silly puzzles is kind of addictive. It's always like one more, just one more. And I haven't even plugged in to like talk to all y'all when, um, when y'all are 
plugged into the Discord chat room. I'm just silently trying to do the puzzles. I'm sure if I was plugged in, uh, that's when the, the real fun would begin. So if all y'all don't know what I'm babbling about, uh, Daily Pigeon Live with Andy Bumatai is a Twitch show, a YouTube show, a Twitter show, a Facebook show, a LinkedIn show. Um, I don't know. He shows on all the platforms. Anyway, he has a Discord server, and if you are lucky enough to know someone who can give you an invite, I can't at the moment because I don't have my Discord server up, um, but there's a puzzle page channel on that server where we like to hang out and do puzzles because we are a bunch of wild and crazy people. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, good, and where y'all aren't talking that much when it's a hard one. Okay, cool. Yeah, that surf one was a lot of blue, so it was definitely um, definitely a hard one, as it were. Michael Anthony Smith, good to see you. Um, I don't know how long you're going to be hanging out, because it is a weeknight in theory for some folks. Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb, Michael Anthony Smith, and say that you probably do have to work tomorrow. Because you're in the industry that doesn't take any time off. I mean, radio has got to be radio. You know, it's it doesn't, there's no holiday for radio. Uh, so I'm guessing you're one of the folks that has to go to work tomorrow. In theory, I'm supposed to go to work tomorrow as well. But um, we've got some serious cold weather right now and white Christmas snow and later on, uh, later on, Boxing Day snow, I guess, is what we've got. Hey, um, Belly Bear, good to see you. Yes, first time chatter, and you are catching the show for the first time live. Um, so, Yamamoto-san, also here, excelente, buffering right now. Yeah, it looks like from what um, someone said, I don't remember who it was who answered my question, um, but it looks like we're stuck at 720, so unfortunately... Um, we're going to have to roll with the buffering. If y'all had been here last night, you would have been able to adjust. But last night's news doesn't do us any good today. Uh, speaking of last night at Satterbox at the cinema, I'm not sure exactly who got to join us. But it was the ref. And quite honestly, um, even though um, Dennis Leary is not exactly family friendly, wholesome or someone you think of when it comes to the holiday spirit it was actually a really good holiday movie i in my opinion it is my it's my favorite holiday movie i will admit i am a little bit biased but it sounded like some of you guys thought it was a cute little movie by the end now it takes all the way to the end before you're like okay that was cute because there's some brutal moments where it's like oh my what a nightmare right but um but by the out by the way it all works out, it's very happy, family friendly, um, family friendly movie. So uh, let's see. Um, yeah, <laughs> Kenny from the Cove, the Garnish. Yes, um, that would be a, a reference from the movie, and um, a little bit naughty of a reference actually, uh, but hysterical nonetheless. And um, yes, Darlene, it did look like snow was going to be coming our way. Not only snow, but cold, cold weather. We normally don't, like, in the Pacific Northwest, if we don't, we're not one of those places that gets to the 20s very often, and we're actually expected to get into the teens today and tomorrow, so, um, so, uh, uh, yeah, um, it, we're, I, I'm, I'm afraid my pipes are gonna freeze, basically, I'm completely afraid my pipes are gonna freeze, and Belly Bear, I know that you were watching me on YouTube, but uh, Twitch just said you're the first a first time um, uh, responder, a first time chatter on the Twitch side of things, and it's the first time you've been able to hop on a live stream for Twitch. But yeah, Belly Bear, I know who you are. Don't you even worry. Don't you even worry. I know you're OG Hamajang. <laughs> I think everybody here knows that. Excellent. Yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, Darlene, you and Rick were busy doing uh, holiday things. So I'm really, uh, I mean, I'm bummed that you weren't able to be there yesterday either. But at the same time, you know, life gets in the way, right? Um, yeah, okay, Kenny from the Cove is asking if I'm going to catch the festivities at Queen Anne Hill. 
Uh, if you're on my uh, Facebook feed, I posted, it was just a joke link. It was a joke um, link to a live, st- a quote unquote live stream. And, um, uh, oh, and I don't have my Twitch open. Um, so let's see here. You know, if you could send Rick or Kenny the Discord invite, they as moderators can post the hot link. Um, but right now, I'm actually not in my Twitch. I'm on my OBS, and I don't have access to my whispers. And so, and if I do, I'm afraid of pushing the button. So I, if you could send that in Discord invite to either Kenny from DeCove or Rick, and then they could, um, they can post those hot links. That would be super awesome. And um, yeah, exactly, Darlene. Um, an extra pair of socks. Turn the heat up. Also, open the uh, door uh, under your. He- mm-hmm. Let's try that again. Also, open your door under your sink to allow the heat to keep the pipes from freezing. Yes, I've done all of those things, and I have the uh, kitchen sink, which is the furthest faucet from the furthest faucet, basically. Uh, it's been dripping all day, so, you know, um, the movement of the water, I'm hoping, will also help. And, actually, just a few years ago, my crawl space did get vapor sealed, re-insulated, etc. So, I'm in pretty good shape. But, on the other hand, um, we literally are not, this is not weather that we get here. So, I can't help but be just a little bit like, oh, but what if, oh, but what if, oh, but what if. Um which, uh, it, for better or for worse, I guess, right? You know, better to be a little bit paranoid, I suppose. Um, uh, perfect. Oh, Anne, thank you so much for uh, sending those little invite links. And if Kenny and or Rick can pop them into the chatter with Statter, um, you know, into the chat box, that would be great. Although, you know, what I really need to be doing is, and sorry, you guys, I literally just pressed buttons that I really should not have pressed so hopefully hopefully I'm still here because I accidentally um, almost closed you guys out and that's not good Um, so okay Rick perfect that is so if y'all y'all aren't familiar with Daily Pigeon Live Discord that is the link to the Discord and that is where um, a lot of the Statterbox crew and a lot of the Daily Pigeon Gangy, Hamajang Gang hang out doing, like I said, really exciting things like putting together puzzles. But you know what I really like about the puzzle channel on um, on uh, the Discord server or online, actually, I've been thinking about trying to get into puzzles because Michael Anthony Smith, I think I saw you saying that you suck at puzzles. Dude, dude, so do I. Oh, my God. Right. So it's like, I don't really want to like buy a puzzle, spend money on buying a puzzle that then will take up a bit of space in a very tiny house that I have. And I have cats. So I think are we already on the maybe the same page for why a real life puzzle might not be a good plan for me. And so um, for, for the last like probably year, I've been just like trying to think like I wanted to do puzzles because um it's a way to work my brain. And since I knew that like I was bad or am bad at the puzzles, that's a good that's a good brain exercise for me because it's not the way I think, right? Um, but I haven't been wanting to buy them because it's like, eh, I don't want to spend the money. I don't have the space to spend. And even if I did have the space to spend and the time, it would still take me so long, more than one sitting that my cats would do something with the pieces. And uh, there's nothing worse than like being almost done with your puzzle and then it's just like, oh, three pieces pieces are missing. And one of them was an edge piece, which is why I went crazy finding no edge piece when I knew there had to be an edge piece because the edge piece is somewhere under the kitchen sink or something. You know, I don't know where it is because the cats went away with it, right? Yeah, um, yeah, you need a d- the dining table, exactly, Anne, the dining table clear, I don't have a dining table, so I would need my, um, my card table, which I do have a card table, but the funny thing about the card table is I use the card table three days a week. What I use the card table for? 
I use the card table to prop up this little background because this background um, is, is um, you know, it's just a canvas that I've draped scarves over and it's propped up on a card table so you don't have to see my ugly kitchen because in a 500 square foot house, even when things are put away, they're not put away. But even when things are put away, things look like they're all cluttered. And Rick, thank you so much for getting Michael Anthony Smith the streams because, yeah, Michael Anthony Smith, remember, um, well, you don't, and that's okay. Um, if you check our Facebook messages, uh, last week, I believe it was, I gave you all of the times. So Rick has them here, but if you do uh, end up forgetting, um, I don't know why this reminder will remember if you forgot, but... Check your Facebook messages from me and you, between me and you, and it should be in there. You should just maybe scroll up a little bit, and it should be right there. So, um, so yeah. And then also, Michael Anthony Smith, and anybody who's wondering, if you go to my Twitch channel, I do have my schedule set up. So if you click on the schedule tab, it should take you to um, all the time slots that I am planning on doing Chatter with Statter, and then Statterbox at the Cinema. Speaking of Statterbox at the Cinema, this coming weekend, we are going to be watching Dazed and Confused. That will be on New Year's Day. Now, I know that this takes place on the last day of school slash first day of summer, but new beginnings, new beginnings, ending of the ending, starting of the start, sounds like a good time for... An end of school movie slash beginning of the year movie. Kind of in the same theme. Plus, this movie is so awesome. If you've never seen it, um, it is. it takes place in like 1976. So there's a lot of teenage weed smoking and drinking because things were different back then. I mean, maybe they weren't different, but you know what I mean. Um, so don't be offended. Just go with the flow. It's a funny, it's a funny little, a funny little, uh, movie as it were and Kenny from the Cove that is exactly right all right all right all right and you know I used to actually start a lot of my roller derby um bouts with that phrase when I was an announcer for the uh the joint base Lewis McCord Army Air Force roller derby team uh, I was one of the uh, their announcers so for many years had to um had I was actually like the main announcer, so I was the one in charge of the show, pretty much the one, the the MC, and so uh, you know how do you like start? Well, how you start is you steal a line from Matthew McConaughey, and you say, "All right, all right, all right, it's time for roller derby to begin." <laughs> so there you have it. Yeah, um, blatantly cockroached it from. Matthew McConaughey, oddly enough, nobody ever called me on it, which to me, it was the most, that is the most iconic Matthew McConaughey, um, Matthew McConaughey line saying, I mean, everybody associates that phrase with him, right? Now, apparently in the roller derby world, no one knows who the flip and flirt Matthew McConaughey is. So, all right then. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, um, yes. And Elaine, you're totally right. Elaine's telling me that I can go directly to the online puzzle page on my own, choose the least number of pieces, then as you get better, you can select more pieces to add challenge. Well, okay, I sort of can, Elaine. Here's the deal. I, I have gone, um, I have gone to that page, and I have completed a puzzle by myself, but I don't, I just pick by the picture. I still am not quite sure how to pick by the number of pieces. So, uh, Anne Ware told me that I could do that too. And I believe you. I mean, I really do. I just don't know how to do it yet. So, um, plus, it's really fun to do it with other people, too. But don't get me wrong. I've actually completed many puzzles by myself. Um, uh, which is, which is that's the awesome thing, is you don't have to worry about losing a puzzle piece because they're all contained on your screen. And, uh, you know, my cats, they don't even care. They do not even care. Oh, good. I'm so glad that the... Uh, third time's a charm, no more lagging. And yes, that's right, Michael Anthony Smith. I remember you used to be an announcer for, I believe it was Dutchland um, in Pennsylvania, right? The Dutchland Derby Dames. And uh, yes, there you have it. Um, I, uh, 
I have, I'm trying to remember. I don't think I ever saw Dutchland play in person. I think the only time I ever saw Dutchland play was via the live stream when they went to nationals and the championships. Um, and I remember, if I'm remembering this correctly, so mm, don't quote me, but if I remember, they forfeited against Gotham in because they knew that they were going to lose, at which that's a horrible attitude to have when going into a playoff situation. But at the time, Gotham, which was the New York City team, they were virtually unstoppable. They were, you, nobody could beat them. So Dutchland, they, they were being pessimistic, but they were also being very realistic. I mean, very realistic. And ultimately what they, they didn't, they were first paired up with Gotham and they chose to forfeit that game because they knew they were going to lose and they didn't want anybody to be injured from the game that they knew they were going to lose anyway. And so then they could go into the second round stronger and and safer and less exhausted and less injured. So it was a huge controversy, which is why I remember Dutchland. Honestly, like they caused a huge uproar in the roller derby world when they chose to forfeit like that. And um, and part of the reason why they caused a huge uproar is because roller derby was created by a bunch of people who didn't usually didn't grow up playing sports, and so they don't like the roller derby culture. Though eventually evolving into a much more sports oriented mindset, started out not so athletically oriented, which led to some weird. Which led to some misunderstandings. Anybody who had a sports background thought that Dutchland forfeiting was the smartest thing they possibly could have done. In fact, there was no other option for them, really, given the circumstances they were facing. Um, but anybody who wasn't brought up in an athletic background thought that it was cheating and they just it it it, it, it was quite interesting actually um I, I i thought that uh i thought that dutchland took a very brave stance doing what they do oh okay so elaine you're hooking me up with the knowledge about the puzzles all right so when i select the puzzle the okay box pops up on the left of the box is an icon of squares click that and the numbers appear for your choosing Oh, so as you feel more confident, then you join in the Discord group and have fun. Oh, I have fun at the Discord group anyway, because what I do when I'm in the Discord group, here, I'll tell you my little secret. Okay, wait, hold on. Let's see what I missed first. Um, uh, um, okay, you do remember that, Michael Anthony Smith, what I'm talking about in regards. Yeah, that's, we were obviously involved in Derby at the same, in the same era. Yes, yes. Um, so let's see. Um. So, uh, well, Kenny from the Cove, okay, you bring up a good point. You remember when the whole world thought the U.S. hockey team was going to lose to the Russians? Okay, I can appreciate that logic. And, and having been an official for the Ole Rollers, which was the world champion team for a while out of Olympia until Gotham came and knocked them out of the water, um, there is something to be said for going in with a bad attitude or going in with a winning attitude. And I've seen roller derby teams get to the floor for their warm up laps. And I could tell by the look on their face that they were already, they'd already lost. They already lost in their mind. They already, they already, it, there was just a look of like, well, let's just get this over with. Let's just get our asses whooped. Let's get our asses handed to us. Let's just get this over with. Um, and so when you've got that mindset, which obviously the U.S. hockey team did not, uh, if you're going onto the track with that mindset, you've, you've already lost the game, you know? So, so honestly, like why bother? Now I'm not suggesting that that was how Dutchland came to it. I'm just saying I've seen plenty teams who, even if they could have beat the Ole Rollers, they wouldn't they 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 couldn't their brains they, even if physically they could have their brains told them they couldn't and it wouldn't and it's not gonna happen so there you have it um oh no you um belly bear your catalytic convertible um was stolen that is so awful dude i don't know if it's just a west coast thing or what the deal is 
But those catalytic converters, I, I don't know how they're going to solve this problem. But all y'all, do you know? Um, do you know what we're talking about here? So, um, so in in the Seattle area, and I'm pretty sure it's I'm pretty sure it's up and down the entire West Coast. Hey, vomiting goose, good to see you. Thanks for swinging in yesterday for Statterbox. Now today is our usual little chatter, 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 and um, we're talking about catalytic. No, we're not talking about that. Ugh, because I can't say the word. We're talking about catalytic converters getting stolen. It's happening everywhere on the West Coast. Um, I don't know if it's happening all over the country. If it's just a, um, if it's just a West Coast thing, I'm not sure uh, what the situation is. But um, oh, okay, so it's a it's a nationwide thing. Okay, yeah, um, it, which makes sense. I mean, the cost of the they're selling it for the metal inside, I guess. Um, and so, you know, the metal is worth what it's worth everywhere. And, um, it does, it happens a lot in Hawaii. So, um, and where it's no, it's not that there's a shortage of catalytic converters. It's they're selling them for the metal, the precious metals that are inside the converters. And so, um, I think, um, oh, Michael Anthony Smith, it's the first you've heard about it. Oh, good. I mean, lucky, you know, um. Fantastic! I'm glad to hear this trend hasn't hit everywhere. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Kenny from the Cove, having played on some monumentally crummy teams, you know two things. Sports are as much mental as they are physical, and miracles can happen. That is true. That is true. Um, it, so, you know, I mean, Dutchland with forfeiting when they did, I'm sure... I'm sure their choice is still debated to this day in some circles. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, yeah, and it's the valuable metals inside the converter, an anti-pollution device. Yeah, and um, uh, and some of the converters, I think, are... Uh, right, it, it, and where? Kind of like when thieves break into a vacant house to chop out the copper piping. That is exactly the situation. Um, and... Uh, uh, Poof. So there's a cut. There's like two different um, easy tar or targets for these things. First off, there's like there's the easy targets, which is like um, I think like the Honda Accords. Honda Accords just get it right and left. They're like stolen car, the most stolen cars, etc. But um, I think Honda Accords and a couple other um, cars, they're just like super easy to slide in, slide out, get get it and get it out. Like they're just easy access. Get them. But then also there's a couple other cars and I I don't know which ones they are, but like there's a different, they use a different kind of catalytic converter that has like even more of the precious metals. And those ones are also like super, um, super worthwhile. And you can you can get a cage installed around them for like 400 bucks. And I've known a couple people who have done it already because it is, um, uh, it is, it, you, it takes but minutes for the thieves to do it, and they'll do it anywhere. My boss's husband had his catalytic converter stolen out of his Honda Accord um, when it was parked at a park and ride while he was um, out playing golf with some of his buddies. You know, I mean, he, it, he hadn't been gone for maybe an hour before the cops showed up at the house and was like, uh... Does he, does someone, you know, does this person live here and his car has, you know, been reported as having the catalytic converter stolen because I guess somebody saw it happen or I'm not, I don't even know how it all went down. But I do know that on my, um, on my Facebook feed, uh, in one of my neighborhood groups, somebody said that they literally watch someone steal their catalytic converter, not because they were standing there watching, but because they didn't realize exactly what was happening, and in the time that it took her to comprehend, why did that truck stop at the end of my driveway and block my car in? What are those dudes doing? Oh my gosh, I need to get my shoes on and go get the, and oh, and now they're gone. I mean, it was like, literally, it was less than two minutes from start to finish before, you know, from parking job to thieving job to driving off. Um, it, it, she watched it all happen and she like she said it was it was it was they were there and gone in less than two minutes so uh you know super um super super um fast 
to do. And um, yeah, two to five minutes, done, exactly. And because what happens is two people do it, right? You know, um, you've got one person who's, you know, in the getaway car. Sometimes both people come out and do it, one on each side, blah, blah, blah. Either way, yeah, boom, boom, boom. Um, uh, <laughs> around Milwaukee, they steal Kias for some reason. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, isn't that weird? And yeah, you know, everybody, um, uh, everybody, um, has or <laughs> every place has their own little you know cars that are the the good ones to get stolen as it were and yeah Hondas um, and Kias it says Darlene are the easiest to get them faster so they go after those brands first right yeah there you go like I was saying the Honda Accord is like apparently it's really easy access to get that thing um, and so it's just boop 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 and um, yeah Belly Bear, uh, you can de you can try to do that by painting your converter bright red or bright any color and get your VIN or license number engraved directly onto your converter. Sure, yeah, but you know that costs money, and might as well just spend the money on the cage or whatever, right? I mean, honestly, the, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I'm just saying like, huh, you know, it still costs money um, and time and effort and the like. So uh, it's so. You know, it's just like, well, what do, what do I do? You know, I have to, it's not, you know, it, it, it's not like you can just get a cheap um, club to, you know, put around your steering wheel type thing. You know, it's an expensive fix no matter how you do it. And I understand that some cities are going to be like, they don't call this, they don't call it this, but I do, uh, meth protocols, because I do believe, um, Vomiting Goose mentioned, it's basically a bunch of meth heads. Um, and, uh, and so, and regardless of whether or not it's meth heads or not, it's still meth protocols. And meth protocols is this, because y'all, all y'all know this by now, I'm sure. Whenever you go and you buy a package of Sudafed, you have to show your ID and register in a book. Well, I propose every time you go set, sell a catalytic converter, you have to show your ID and register in a book. And if you sell more than two catalytic converters in a month, you go on a watch list, just like the meth protocol for the Sudafed. That's just what I'm saying. Now, I know that the meth protocol for Sudafed was put in place for a pretty good reason, but sometimes when I'm in the middle of a flippin' flirpin' allergy attack and I can barely see and I'm, I'm oozing out every facial orifice, I do resent having to get the pharmacist, show my ID, go in a logbook, blah, 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 just to buy a stupid little red pill. Um, so, you know what? If you're going to sell a, something with precious metals, good flipping lord. You know, if you, you have to do that kind of thing at a pawn shop. You can't just go sell stuff at a pawn shop, right? I mean, I'm not trying to blame the people who are buying these things off of the people who are stealing these things, but... Good lord, people who are buying these things off of the people who are selling these things. Isn't there something that you can do to... I just... Yeah, I know. I, this, I mean, talk about a... Talk about a soapbox moment right now. I know, I know, I'm on the soapbox. And I'm even looking for my little soapbox things, but I can't find nothing because I'm not in my Twitch. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's soapbox time. And that is what I think. I think that the people who, um, here's my soapbox. There we go. I think that people who, uh, who, um, who buy them are a little bit complicit in this, this crime wave at this point. Um, that's what it is. Belly Bear, that's exactly it. The Toyota Prius is the number one because the car is part electric and the converters are less used. Yes, it's the Prius that I was referring to, and that was exactly it. Um, um, well, and then Goose, maybe if we had universal income for people that have trouble working, then these types of thefts would calm down. Oh, absolutely. I, yeah, there's, there's solving the problem, and then there's, there's putting pressure on the wound. What I'm... <laughs> what I'm suggesting is putting pressure on the wound. Yeah, you're you're suggesting an actual solution to the problem. Not even going to um, not even going to argue with that because that is exactly it. It is income insecurity um, that is causing a lot of the crime wave that we are seeing across the country um, these days. Uh, so um, so yeah, I, the uh, but you know. <laughs> 
You got to somehow sometimes work with what you got. And in the in the short term, and this really is just it. It's the short term. In the short term, I just can't help but wonder, like, the people who are buying them, like, where are they in this equation, right? You know? Um, so let's see here. You um, you saw, Vomiting Goose, you saw a video on YouTube recently of a converter thief being caught, and they held him down under the car till the police came. You, you know, good, right? I mean... I'm not somebody who wants to throw everybody in jail willy-nilly, but seriously, dude, you got caught red-handed. Like, you you know, tag, you're it. Sorry, game over, right? Right. Um, so, uh, um, Darlene, I'm not sure who you're asking about the O2 sensor and the muffler, but um, my best guess is, yes, indeedy, that is exactly it. Um, they were just trying to get to the, to the, the catalytic converter. So... Um, so let's see here. I know, right? Exactly. And Rick, exactly. It's a tough spot to be trapped under the car with angry boots on the outside. Yeah, and here's the deal. Your car still runs without the catalytic convertible. Convertible. <laughs> without the catalytic converter. It doesn't run well, and you shouldn't run it long. You should basically just, like, get it to the shop and get it fixed. But it does still run, which my point is, you under my car... Remember, my car can still run over your head if I got to. So why don't you just stay right under my car until the cops come? Yeah, that's just how that works. So um, so let's see here. Uh, Vomini Goose, it's sad to say that eventually people are going to stop it. They, uh, have, they have don't... Uh, let's try this again. Um, so... Um, <sighs> Eventually, people are going to rise up with all this crime, and revolution will take place to stop it. They have done that in other countries, and they're going a direction with hunting down thieves and criminals now that crime, um, and now crime is almost non existent. Yeah, well, um, definitely uh, vigilantism is something that is, I have no doubt in my mind that we are going to be seeing an increase of that in, in our country. Absolutely. Um, Rick, have I ever gone into a junkyard that mostly cash businesses types in there? Um, <laughs> oh, Rick. Yes. Yes, I have. Not only yes, yes, I have. Um, uh, one of my best friends works for a junkyard like that. So um, I, I, I know what, what I'm proposing with the mostly cash. Yeah, that is basically what I'm saying is. Yes, there are businesses out there, Rick, that are li exactly like that, which is why meth protocols need to be, you know, okay, it's regulated now. you got to write every one, every one of these that you've got in your shop, I need to see paperwork for. I need to see the ID that you took it for. I need to see, I need to see, I need to see. Um, because you are right. Um, some of those junkyard places that are especially, you know, cash-oriented, are shady as shady can be. Absolutely. Um, and, and that is, yeah, that is where, um, where I think a lot of people are um, selling them. Now, Devin, maybe they sell them on the dark web. That's true. It's possible. But I'm pretty sure, really, this is in-person in, in live transactions via cash uh, with shady characters. But... Um, but you know, uh, even if you even if you uh, do what I refer to as meth protocol, you know, with the registration, et cetera, et cetera, there's gonna be they're gonna find a way to work around it. But it, you know, it's just another hoop, and it's just another hoop in the game of cat and mouse, which absolutely makes no sense. But I think you know what I'm trying to talk about. Um, still, though, I just. It is so rampant, this catalytic converter, converter. Wow, you know, I just want to say anything but catalytic converter, don't I? Uh, anyway, it, there's just so much more. Um, it, this crime spree is so widespread. I just, I kind of feel like, well, we've got to do something. Even if it's not going to work, we've got to do something. We've got to try. And that's a really poor attitude to have. But still. Still, you know, I mean, it's really spending good money, money after bad, I suppose. But I kind of, at this point, I've seen so many people have their stuff stolen like that. 
I mean, it's not like, look, I don't necessarily have a lot of sympathy for people who get their car rifled through because nine times out of 10, they didn't lock their doors. And I know this because all the times my car got rifled through, it was because I didn't lock my doors. And you know what? If you didn't bother to do the least, the least safety protocol that you possibly could have, well, you're a little bit to blame for what happened to you. And I have no problem with accepting that blame. But with the catalytic converter, what can you do other than spend 400 extra bucks and lose your car for a day to get one of those cages installed? I mean, it's not a case of just, you know, turning on the car alarm for gonna sake, right? You know, it just, ugh, it's just so frustrating. Um, belly bear, or bear belly, God, why do I keep saying belly bear? Bear belly 401. On YouTube, a family saw the thief and he ran off because their floodlights came on. They knew he'd be back, they put tires all underneath the car and put a big sign saying, smile, you're on camera. He grabbed the sign and ran off. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, that's, you know, you kind of have to, I guess we can call it like what home alone protocols. You know, you have to get your own, set your own booby traps and, uh, you know, get, <laughs> set the criminal up in your own, in your own way. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly, Kenny. Stay where you're at or get a good year tattoo. Exactly. Um, so, uh, Devin, then again, maybe meth heads, uh, sold their computer for drugs and no can sell on the dark web. Uh, possible. Hard to say, but, um, <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> vomiting goose. They did it in the Old West, and lots of things under got under control it, over time. It can be seen as sad and cruel, but, you know, sometimes you gotta cut off the hand of a thief. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, um, Vomiting Goose, I'm not sure which country it was that did the mob justice, but I can say that, um, I want to say it's like, Malaysia, I think? You know, I mean, they'll do public beatings uh, for for crimes and um and uh apparently it it kind of works um you know the humiliation and the the um the family's shame definitely sends a message but you know we have a totally different culture here in america in regards to like your name your family's name and the responsibilities that come with carrying that name uh in asia it's a lot of shared shame on the family whereas in the u.s we've kind of abandoned that tradition um i mean obviously there's still some pockets where that mindset reigns but as a country itself we don't really <clears throat> we don't really follow that anymore um okay so bare belly dropping the knowledge inside the filter is rhodium palladium and you forgot the third metal is it maybe platinum because somebody was saying something about platinum but either way rhodium and palladium yeah super expensive metals and um, super valuable. So, uh, <clears throat> so, Darlene, the junkyards over uh, everywhere, over over here. I'm not sure what you mean there. Uh, ever these crooks are going and going to should like you stated documented acts where they got that converter, but many will still try and get away with it. Yeah, exactly. They're going to try to work around it, but I kind of feel yeah. No, Darlene, I'm I'm totally on board with you. Um, I. I you're kind of saying what I'm saying. It's like, yeah, they're going to try to get around it, but at least, like, le at least let's make it more difficult for them. to uh, One more hoop for them to jump through to get away with it. To, you know, I mean, it's like, okay, well, now you have to falsify paperwork. Okay, well, now you have to, you know, I mean, just... Now you have to commit more crimes in order to commit this one crime, I guess, is what I'm suggesting. You know, um... But, yeah, um... And and where yes you can get a security cage for your for your catalytic converter but like I said you know it's a couple hundred bucks plus the time off uh, the time without your car and if you've only got one car that can be a big deal um, so uh, <clears throat> um, yeah vomiting goose that is true especially with the COVID uh, pandemic the um, a lot of the county jails are just booking and releasing, so it's creating a whole other, yeah, a whole other issue. Because, yeah, they're right back out on the street the very next day. So, um, uh, Rick, 
Rick, am I going to have to prell you? Because I like how you think. Rick says, well then, we just need to start stealing the converters from all the lawmakers. See how fast, fast they fix the problem then. Oh, Rick. If Darlene wasn't yours, you'd have my heart. I'm loving that suggestion. I am loving that suggestion. Um... Vomiting Goose, like in California, you can steal stuff and walk out of stores and nothing's done. Yeah, that is true um, in some of the stores. Actually, uh, I guess I can say this now because it doesn't exist anymore. But um, I had a friend who worked at Toys R Us back when Toys R Us existed. And um, he was a manager of several different stores. So this was not just a singular store's policy. This was a universal policy of Toys R Us. If you saw someone shoplifting... You didn't. Seriously, like, that's not exactly how they worded it, but it was just like, yeah, if you see someone stealing, don't do anything about it. That was their specific instruction. Don't do anything about it. So, <laughs> I mean, it's no wonder Toys R Us went out of business, right? Yeah. Um, Cause yeah, seriously, you could, I mean, now I'm not, I, I'm only saying this now because I didn't, I mean, I don't want you guys to, I don't want you guys to just go into a store and start stealing, but since Toys R Us, that was their official policy back in the day, um, but since they no longer exist, I'll let you know that that was the official policy back in the day. You totally could have just walked into Toys R Us and taken stuff and nothing would have happened. Because um, their policy was, if you see someone stealing, no you didn't. <laughs> so, um, uh, Let's see here. To make it funny, bad as it was, you were dressed like an elf when this happened. Oh, that's funny, Bear Belly. Um, I was on my way to the NFW Hall to donate your time. You still did. Well, yeah, I mean, what are you, where are you going to go? Your car's not going to take you there. Um, and you left your car till Monday to get towed. There you go. There you go. I mean, there you have it. Um, well, Michael Anthony Smith, yeah. Head on over to bed. Um, I'm sorry that you're not feeling well. I hope that you get the day off tomorrow, but I think you probably don't. So you need to go moi moi anyway. But thank you so much for hanging out. I'm so glad to see you every day that you are able to pop in. And just remember, or try to remember, my, my schedule is posted on my Twitch page. And then also I did message you my schedule. So it should be in your Facebook messages from me. And um, so let's see here. Um, Darlene, then in our area, they're really going to start cracking down on reckless, dangerous drivers. We're causing severe accidents and many innocent people are getting uh, injured or killed. Yeah, um, <laughs> well, <laughs> I hope that they have good luck with that. If um, their attempts at curbing that behavior are anything like what happens in Seattle or in the Bay Area, that's going to be a long um, battle for, um, to. yeah, I don't know how that's going to work. <laughs> I mean, good luck. I hope that they do, but... Um, yeah, that doesn't really seem to... They're not really able to get control of those types of drivers around here at all. Like, the the racing um, is still a chronic problem. Uh, the And in the Bay Area, they've got what these things called sideshows, where a group of people literally unofficially closed down a major thoroughfare, you know, to do donuts and to do this, that, and the other thing. And, um, yeah. Um, it, I mean, it's really... It, it's. <laughs> I don't mean to be cynical, but sometimes I think of the world that I grew up in and the world that we're in now, and it's like, wow, man, like, we're watching our civilization unravel as we speak, and I, I can't help but laugh because it's just like, it's so out of control. Everything seems so out of flipping control right now. Um, yeah, uh, let's see here. Oh, Bear Belly. Okay, you used to be Belly Bear. <laughs> Which is why I wanted to keep calling you Belly Bear. See, I knew I knew who you were. Um, I just wasn't paying a tough attention or something. Yeah. Um, oh, hey, Shock. Good to see you. Um, good to see you here. We are babbling about catalytic converters getting stolen, mostly on the West Coast. It sounds like the Midwest hasn't had that wave of crime yet. Curious if you've seen it up in your Virginia way. Um so, Vomiting Goose, this is another reason why I'm buying a farm soon. If you're in the middle of nowhere, you won't have to put up with any more of this crap. Just you and the geese and ducks and pigs and horses. That's the life. Well, careful, because the pigs, the pigs can be a little dangerous. 
the most dangerous flipping animal in the farm, so you be sure to treat those pigs nice. Otherwise, they might eat you. Um, yeah. Um, so <laughs> keep your criming simple, I always say. That's funny. That's always a good... Um, a good uh a good rule of thumb um uh, mad statter uh, vomity goose suggests why get a cage when you can just install a bear trap facing down under the converter well because i have cats i have cats and they go under cars that's why oh my i don't want to be your neighbor my cats might go under your car and then they get trapped by a bear trap um Let's see here. Um, <laughs> Rick. Yep, we'll meet at the Capitol at high noon. Emphasis on high. There we go. Um, so, Bear Billy, you heard no rest for under 900. Yeah, because then it's not a... Yeah, it's just misdemeanor uh, if it's under 900 and whatever. And then beyond, beyond that, it turns into a felony. So, um, so then you... It, it doesn't look good when you just let the felonies just walk away, right? Right, yeah. Um, so, let's see here. Um, and where, well, I suppose Toys R Us didn't want employees to get injured or the company liable for any violence over confronting a shoplifter. Well, you would think. And that is something that when I worked at Target was uh, an issue in the sense that they didn't want us chasing after them. They didn't necessarily want us confronting them. But Target had security and we were supposed to, and security was supposed to deal with it. And security had different protocols for how to deal with it. And so I guess really what it boiled down to is Toys R Us had no security and management didn't want their random, you know, teenagers who were stocking the shelves to chase down somebody and um, then, you know, big lawsuits, etc. cetera, um, especially since... You know, it is a toy store, and so the likelihood of someone maybe having a kid with them while they're maybe stealing, you know, I can, uh, you know, it gets a little, gets a little dicey at that point. Um, I, so I don't exactly know what the reasoning behind Toys R Us's policy was, but I do know that, um, that their policy was like, yep, don't just let it happen. So, um, which to me is sort of weird. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, let's see here. Um, oh, okay, Darlene, I missed it when Michael Anthony said that he was off tomorrow, so I hope that he can get sleep in, because 345 is just too early to wake up. I mean, 345, that's more of a bedtime than a wake-up time in my world. So, um, yeah. Um, <laughs> um. Rick's saying, you always thought double entry doors with an automatic lockdown to trap them might solve some of that crime problem, especially at banks. Yeah, actually, you know, you know, Rick, why don't they have double entry doors for banks? Like, duh, that seems so, duh. Oh, really, Vomiting Goose? They're too lazy to eat anyone? That's funny, because when my dad... My dad grew up on a farm, and he said... He was just like, nope. The most dangerous... The most dangerous job on the farm, bar none, is feeding the pigs. Because if you fall in when you're feeding them... Well, you're feeding them. <laughs> Literally. They're feeding on, on you. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see here. My cats won't go under my car... Uh, Vom uh, under your car, Vomity Goose, you have a doggy door and you're always cooking some type of chicken or fish dish and love neighborhood cats. Your cats would be free to come in for a snack. Oh, if you've got a doggy door, they will come in for a snack. In fact, um, I had a neighbor uh, who, well, I still have a neighbor, the, the same neighbor. behind. We share a backyard fence. No, it's my backyard fence. It's his side fence. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, he told me that he has found my cats in his garbage can on more than one occasion. I don't know what it is that he just throws away, but clearly my cats are dumpster divers, which makes sense because they were alley cats from downtown Seattle. Um, or their moms were, as it were. Um, and yeah, he has found my cats in his house, in his garbage can, digging through to get whatever chicken bone or whatever it is they thought they smelled. 
Um, and I, uh, you know, I mean, I apologize profusely, but what am I going to do? I don't even know how the cats are getting in his house, right? So um, I just told him, I was like, look, man, like spray them with water. They hate being um, sprayed with water, you know? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I'd be like, have you seen my cat? And you're like, yeah, it's right there eating my dog's food. Yeah, that's, there you go. That's true. That's true. Yeah, well, and um, Devin, raccoons come in and um, raccoons come in my in my house sometimes. Um, I uh, <clears throat> had to, uh, I, <laughs> once I had a raccoon that was coming into my house so brazenly and so often that I knew which one it was because his fur was glossy and shiny. Like, that's how much cat food he ate. That his fur was glossy and shiny, like a healthy cat's fur. <laughs> so I knew exactly. It's like, oh, that's the one. And um, I accidentally had a piece of a brown paper bag that had, was crumpled up that fell out of my recycle bin right in front of the cat door and um it turns out that, that was the way that that was the perfect way to keep the raccoon out because the um the paper crinkled when he stepped through the cat door and that made noise and he didn't like that because it alerted to his presence and he was trying to be sneaky but my cats who lived in the house were just like i don't care if people know that i'm coming in so my cats um they didn't care about the paper. They crinkle all the... We'll crinkle on the bag all we want. Um, but uh, but the raccoon didn't want to be crinkly, and so he stopped coming into my house. So there you go. There you go. Um, so, Vomiting Goose, yes, you see, it does sound like a bonus. You get to chill with my kitties and pet them, but then they go home to me at night, and I get to clean their poo. It's a win-win in your book. It is a win-win, because here's the deal, my friend. My cats don't have a litter box, so I don't need to clean up nothing. <laughs> like they gotta go outside. Now that's not true right now. Actually, I do have the I do have a litter box, but I don't let them use it very often right now because it's snowy. I do let them use it, um, but most times it's got a cover on it because it's a big. Um, it's like a tote, you know, a big tote bin, you know, big big tote bin, deep, you know, like two feet deep because cats can fling their stuff. Um, cats can fling the litter so far so I have it in a super deep um, container and it's a tote so you can just pop the lid on it and they can't get in it Yeah. Um, so good you know what I'm talking about because I'm clearly words are very hard uh, Kenny from the Cove so what would you do when one of those trash pandas just strolled on in oh I would open the back door um, which is right next to the right next to the cat door that they came in I would open the back door and then um, if there was any kind of uh, container of water, I would genu generally try to throw it at them. I would generally miss, but they would see that I'm trying to throw something at them. So then they would like run further into my backyard. Um, once I thought about, no, I can't remember what, once I thought about, I can't remember if I was going to close, like if the door was closed and I was going to close the door and like trap it. But then I thought that was the worst idea ever. And I had to laugh at myself because like cornering a raccoon in your house, that, that that's, a, let's do that, right? So no, let, let, don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, yes. It, oh, Darlene, without a doubt, when it's this cold, though, I do let them use the I do let them use the box. Absolutely. I, there's no two ways about it. Although um, my boy Kitty is so used to going outside that he actually did brave the outside today. Um, so. Uh, so he was he was crazy, but he could have used the inside. His sister has been using the inside for the last two days. Very happily. I think I think that she would prefer I keep the the uh the restroom open 24 7 365 days a, a year but no I'm, I'm not down with that i'm not down with that um so let's see uh <laughs> shock says occasionally i hear the 80s in my voice yeah i don't know if you're talking about me but i have a feeling you might be maybe yeah 
<laughs> yeah, there <laughs> and where. Oh, there is a kitty version of the coated cat door, but but I can't. Um, so <laughs> my cats don't like wearing collars, and the last time I had a collar on ashes she had it removed within a half an hour and i'm not sure how she got it removed but i do know that when she came back in she was a little wild-eyed and reckless like i don't know what she did but it was it was rough and so i didn't ever want to put the collar back on her again and then um dusty he doesn't like to wear a collar because because he's just a little smart boy um, cause whenever I put a collar on him, he only walks backwards. <laughs> yeah, he walks backwards cause he doesn't, he wants it off of his, I guess it's because he wants it off of his head. Um, he, he walks backwards and as much as I, um, think it's hysterical, I do think it's mean, so I take the I take the um I take the collar off. So, um, um, and uh, oh hey Andre, good to see you. Uh, don't you want a collar that opens the door and locks it behind you? Well, I it, it doesn't it doesn't matter. The the cats are just not gonna um the cats just aren't gonna wear the collar, uh, which is which is really too bad because I would love to um. To put like a little GoPro, well, I suppose GoPro is not really little, but you know, put a little portable camera on my cat and see what they do besides sleep. Um, Cause I'm sure that they have adventures, but um, but yeah, Devin, that's exactly it. Backwards. He's he's a special, he's a special boy. He is a special, special boy. Um, I've, I've never, I have seen cats protest collars in a thousand different ways. But his insistence on only walking backwards. And your response is 100% correct. I mean, that's all you can do is just laugh. Well, and maybe actually point and laugh. You know, it's just, um, it is truly a case of, you know, um, of ha-ha. And I can't find my ha-ha, so I'm not going to ha-ha myself. But it's a case of ha-ha. Um, absolutely. So, uh-oh. Oh, no, now I can't see the chat. Uh-oh, hold on. Okay, there we go. So, um... Okay, so Chalk is saying, someone put cat cams on cats and record what they did. There was a study you can probably find on the internet. Oh, I know, no, I have. I've seen a bunch of those types of studies and stuff, but I want to see what my cats do. Because, um, I... Yeah, Kenny from the Cove, thank you. That's the, that's the ha-ha I was hoping for. Um... And, and where if they were feral kill kitties, then you can see why they hate collars. They weren't feral kitties per se. They were offspring of feral kitties. So, I mean, they're pretty well acclimated to people. Um, and, you know, they let me rub their belly and everything like that. But ultimately, I didn't put collars on them when they were young enough. And so it just, my mistake, really, you know. Um and yeah, exactly, Darlene. If the, if their cats are going to keep ripping the collars off, it's not a good solution. Yeah, that's ex that's exactly it. And that's the and that's the whole thing. Also, is because my cats are indoor outdoor cats, I like to use the um, the breakaway collars because I don't want my cat to hang itself on a branch. Which trust me, it's possible they climb up into the trees a lot. And yeah, Darlene, I knew I knew exactly what you meant. I knew you meant cats. Um, and so the breakaway collars are a little bit easier. Um, for cats to break off, you know? Um, although I don't think she's quite figured out how to do that. Um, I think, yeah, I don't exactly know. Um, uh, Little Dipper 321, have I recently had a fight with a cat? No, um, no. My cats and I generally don't fight, but when I do fight with cats, and I have had feral cats that I've needed to manhandle, oh, dude, they always... I always walk away bleeding. I mean, bruised and bleeding. Cats, pound for pound, are tough. They're you're always gonna um, you're always gonna lose. Um, so so why not put a rid tag on their microchip? Well, gosh darn, Andre, you're acting as though my cats have a microchip, 
and it's on the list of things to do. It just hasn't happened yet. Um, no, I plan on, I plan on getting the microchip, but, um, but I don't know what a RID tag on their microchip is. Um, do you mean an? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Oh, do you mean an art like a radio frequency tag so I can like track them that way? Um, well, I don't really know what you mean, but if you mean that, I don't have the technology to do that. That's why I don't do that. Um, okay, what's an RFID then? I'm not sure. A radio frequency ID? Is that what RFID is? I'm making stuff up. Did I make it up right? Someone tell me, please. Yay, radio frequency ID. I was right. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but you still have to have, like, the machinery to to track them, right? And frankly, I don't really want to just track them to see where they go. I want to see what they see. I want to see it. I want to I want to see, you know, if they're hunting for birds, which they are. I want to see um, if they go visit Jimmy. Because, <clears throat> see, I have this cat. He's not my cat. His name's Jimmy, though. And he lives, like, four blocks away. Um, uh, yeah, he lives four blocks away. But he hangs out at my house a lot. And he's afraid of the snow, so sometimes, like, when it snows, if he's at my house, he has to hang out at my house for several days because he's afraid of the snow, so he can't go back home. Um, I found out that uh, once, a couple years ago, because uh, he has a he has a collar, this Jimmy cat has a collar, with his name and the phone number. So I've been in touch with Jimmy's owners on several occasions, and um, which is... <clears throat> Well, the caller's why I know his name. And, um, and, uh, uh, anyway, he, he hangs out here, but four blocks is kind of like, it's kind of a long way. And I just want to know if my cats hang out at his house. I'm guessing that they don't though. Cause I mean, I don't think they really like each other, but on the other hand, Jimmy, I mean, Jimmy acts like my yard is his yard, so I guess they get along. All I know is I live alone, and I spend way too much time, like, pondering the lives of my cats. And so I'm fairly certain that um, being a crazy cat lady is going to be happening sometime in the future. Um, you know, but on the bright side, I have narrowed down my five cats from about a year ago to just two. So my trajectory towards crazy cat lady is is backing off a little bit just a little bit just a little bit <laughs> oh you're saying with the more powerful rf tag they could open the door without a collar gotcha well okay i see what you're saying now eh eh um yeah i'm flattening the crazy cat lady curve that's exactly it shock i am flattening the crazy cat lady curve you got it down that is it. Um, yeah, and now to be fair, some of these cats that I collected, because they were collected, um, three of them were what I would consider mine. Um, then one of them was a feral who considered me his, and then the other one lived in the backyard um, and, and wouldn't come in. Mostly because my other cats wouldn't let him come in. Um, because I think I think Cinders, because I named him Cinders, I think Cinders would have come in if the other cats would let him. But Big Poppy, he was the feral who considered me his. Big Poppy ran security pretty tight, and even though he allowed, you know, the three cats that belonged to the house into the house, he was pretty tough about what else was acceptable under his watch. Um... But alas, Big Poppy is no longer with us, and Cinders I eventually took to um, the animal control place where he got adopted in like two seconds flat, apparently. Because he was so, like, I don't know, I think he was a feral cat because he was unneutered, he had the big apple head, but he was like the tiniest little body, and he was just so timid, like he really wanted to be a person's cat, you know? Um, so, uh, yeah, so apparently he was a lover from the get-go, so I'm really glad that I took him to the, to the animal rescue place, because he did get adopted so fast. And Harry in Scotland, at one point, my oldest daughter had 13 cats. Wow, she's whittled that down to two now. Excellent, excellente. See, and you know, 
It's see, if I if I had infinity money, I could easily do thirteen cats. I promise you, I could, because I would. It's not the ability to care for them in the sense of giving them attention and loves and rubs and whatever. It's a case of like, well, now I have to buy 13 doses of flea medicine every month. Now I have to take 13 cats to the vet to get their teeth cleaned. Now I need to, it's all of the, you know, it's, it's the little stuff that adds up or the big stuff that adds up. That's why I can't have, uh, frankly, I'm thinking two cats is probably too expensive for me at this point, but way less expensive than five. So, um, <laughs> oh no, Andre, you're, um, you're missing the sound of the, vo of the voice that's coming through. You only get a few words and silence until the next sound wave comes back. Oh, I wish we had the gear, right? I wish we could, well, we've got the gear. I wish the gear would do something today. Oh, dang it. I'm sorry that your internet is not working. Um, thanks for trying to hang out. Hang out as long as you can, but if you gotta get on out of here, I am not blaming you. Nothing worse than a than a twitchy Twitch stream. Well, okay, I'm sure there's lots of things worse than a twitchy Twitch stream, but you know what I'm saying. Um, uh, let's see. So, um, well, yeah, okay, Kenny from the Cats. Thir Kenny, from Kenny from the Cats. <laughs> Oops, Kenny from the Cove. Uh, 13 cats, I bet you that situation was fragment, fragrant. Yeah, see, and that's another thing. Um, I would have to, like, no, I can't, I, I couldn't have 13 cats if I had, if I did litter boxes, if I did litter boxes on a regular basis, um, one cat is too much. I don't, so, yeah, um, I wouldn't, um, uh, yeah, that thir 13 cats and the litter box situation does sound... A bit like a fragrant nightmare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bear Belly, you're allergic to cat food. Cat, cat food? No. I'll bet you you're actually allergic to cat fur. And Darlene, you're more of a dog person as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see here. Is it you or do cats live longer than dogs? You've had only cats and had some lived 18. I think that cats generally do have a longer life expectancy than a lot of dogs. Smaller dogs can live longer but the bigger dogs um the bigger dogs yeah generally 10 years old is like an old big dog um so i'm not at all surprised that your cats are outliving the average dog as it were and you know people get mad at me because i have my cats go indoors and outdoors and everything you know it's like don't you want your cats to live a long life shoot dude my cats live to be like well one of them died when he was 13 but he died of it was, I don't know what he died of, but it wasn't from going outside. One of them died when he was 16 because he had diabetes and kidney failure. One of them died when, you know, she was 20 because she had kidneys and diabetes uh, and kidney failure and diabetes. So it's like these, I mean, you know, my cats lived a pretty long life and what they died of, they would have died of if they were indoor or outdoor. It's not like they got hit by a car. Oh, Andre, thank you so much for the 200 biddies. Thank you. Such holiday generosity. Um, I super appreciate that. And um, yeah, exactly. I've known people who have 21-year-old cats. Actually, one of my friends, I think her cat just turned 22. Um, so, uh, so, you know, yeah, cats definitely can live over the age of 20. Um, indoor or out. I mean, sure, the outdoor cats are have a higher risk, but you know, if you live in a situation, now obviously not everybody does, you know, apartment dwellers can't do this, but I live pretty far from main roads. I mean, literally, I if if you look at uh, the aerial street view of my neighborhood, um, which is like a 16 square block of square blocks, um, <laughs> I literally live in the middle of it. So, like, you have to go four blocks this way, four blocks this way, four blocks this way, or four blocks that way before you hit a road that has, that's not just a neighborhood road. Um, and so my cats live in, in the literal middle of the flippin' neighborhood, and um, there's very little risk to them going into a trafficy area. So, you know, and they're, they're dog-wise enough to not... Um, you know, 
to stay away. Although a lot of the neighborhood dogs are actually afraid of my cats, which is kind of awesome, in, in my opinion. So, um, a vomiting goose, you have a huge craving for local moco right now. Yeah, I wouldn't mind some local moco either. Uh, I had some, I made some soup today that I thought was going to be really good, and it was really unsatisfying. I was really not happy. Local moco sounds really, really good. Um, I don't know exactly where you are in the Seattle area, but Burian has an L and L, um, an L, uh, yeah, an L and L Hawaiian, uh, Hawaiian restaurant. Renton has an L and L Hawaiian restaurant, and at least the one in Burien has some pretty good local moco. Cannot speak for the Renton one, but I have heard good things about that. Um, so, if you've got the ability, there is a place for local moco not too far from where you may or may not be. Um, then again, if you're in the north end of Seattle, I'm pretty sure there's an L and L on the other side of town, but I can't tell you where, so I'm not going to. You're going to have to just Google that one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, exactly, Rick. Take a life lesson from those cats that live a long life. Relax and don't thing, don't let things bother you. And another, um, another little thing that we can take from both dogs and cats. Whenever you get up, stretch a little bit. It always, that's just, you know, the little wisdom from, from, the, from our furry animals. When you get up from sleeping, when you get up from sitting, just stretch a little bit. Um, so, ooh, wow, Kenny from the Cove. Speaking of 22, your friend Dwayne had a cat named Tutu because he had 22 claws. Oh, a polydactyl. That's neat. Polydactyls are really good hunters if you let them. Um, you know, because they've got bigger bigger hands to grab with. And um, yeah, Shock, the, the, um, Shock says the camera study also showed the territory size of the cats. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, like, I can't remember if it was, which, which it was, but it was like the boy cats had a smaller range of territory than the girl cats did, or the girl cats had the smaller range. I, one of, if I remember correctly, there was a distinct difference in how the kitties in the study traveled related to their, um, their gender. Um, I was about to say sexual identity, which is different than gender, and I'm not really sure cats have had that discussion yet, so pardon me. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I can't remember though if it was like the girls, I, I want to say the girls hung out more homebound and the boys were the big roamers, but on the other hand, I want to say that the girls were the big roamers because the boys would get in more fights. The boys were more territorial over their territories with other boy kitties but the girls were kind of allowed to roam freely. I can't remember, oh God, I can't remember what, it might not even be the same story that we're talking, or the same study that we're talking about, but one of the, um, one of the uh, cat studies that I read was talking about a gender difference between how the cats roamed. And yes, shock, there is an L and L in Burien. That's why when you were talking about going to L and L, I was able to, I was able to tell you like, oh dude, you don't want to get this. You want to get this. This is crummy. This is good. So, <laughs> yeah, I know you have to go more than an hour, whereas literally 10 minutes in two different. Well, actually, five minutes in one direction, 10 minutes in another direction. I've got two LNL choices. And if I wanted to go down to Tacoma, I'd have a third LNL choice. Um, and Tacoma is like 20 minutes away when traffic is cooperating. When it's not 20 minutes away, it's or when it's not cooperating, it's more like 45 minutes away, but still super close. Um, so yes. And Andre is speaking the truth to vomiting goose. You need to go to Hilo, the birthplace of Locomoco. They got lots of different kinds too. Well, and actually not just Hilo. I mean, uh, first off, I do believe Hilo was the birthplace, but Hawaii in and of itself, you can get all sorts of different variations of Locomoco, but, um, Honestly, like the classic to me is the one that is, I don't know, the most appealing or it just sounds, it just is, is, it's just, you know, the basic gravy, beef, egg, rice. I mean, I, of course you can fancy it up, but why would you? I mean, God, it's just, you know, the perfect, um, it's just so perfect, uh, so yeah, everybody now everybody wants loco moco. Thanks a lot, vomiting goose. 
no, you didn't even bring enough for the whole class. Gosh darn it. Um. <laughs> yes, oh my God, Vomiting Goose. You miss having Hawaiian roommates in college. They always kept the room hotter than hell with too much water in the air, but I always got the best food. That's how I feel. That's... <laughs> <laughs> that is how I feel about living with people um, with Filipinos. Uh, Filipinos keep the air, keep the house way too hot, and they've got so many plants and so many fish, and so it's so flipping humid. It, it's lovely atmosphere to live in to a degree, but on the other hand, it's just like, oh my god, I can only get so naked, I can only take off so many clothes, and I'm still. Hot. Still hot. <laughs> hey, Cindy Krause, good to see you. Oh, goodness, we're going to be wrapping it up in about 10 minutes, but I'm very glad you could hang out today, even if just for a quick minute. We were talking about catalytic, catalytic converters being stolen. Then we were talking about cats. See, there's a theme there. Cats, right? But now we're talking about Locomoco, which has nothing to do with either the catalytic converter... Conver Nothing to do with things from the car or animals that we love. It's talking about gravy and rice and yumminess. Yes, yes. Um, so, Andre, you're saying in Oakland you got Ono. We got Ono. We got a place called Lava. We also have a chain called Ohana. Yeah, we, and, well, Burien actually has two Hawaiian restaurants. There's the l and um, but then there's also the Ohana Kitchen, which is owned and operated by a local family. And it's actually a Korean-style Hawaiian restaurant. Um, instead of mac salad, they give you uh, japchae noodles. It's like a cold noodle salad. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's super tasty and super good. And I do like their food, but... Um, but basically, you know, I don't have a whole lot of money to go out and eat. And the Ohana Kitchen is way more expensive than l, &L especially considering the amount of food that you get. I can make one l, l plate lunch last me like three meals. Whereas the Ohana Kitchen, it's like a meal, maybe a meal and a half, a meal and a snack. Um, and it costs more. So I, um, I kind of, I mean, it's, it's good, um... It's good. In fact, the Ohana Kitchen, I mean, first off, the Japchae noodles are super tasty. Um, and they have the best fried shrimp there. I don't know how or why they do their shrimp so good, but their fried shrimp is delicious. But those, it's just not worth the cost. I'm a cheapskate. I'd rather go to l, &L. <laughs> Cindy Krause, you made Loco Moco this Christmas morning. Well, gall dung it. We all should have flown down to California and gotten some Loco Moco yesterday. Um... Yeah. So um, Tacoma has too many crackheads. Well, Tacoma, I see, I wouldn't say that they have too many crackheads. I, I would say that they have a fair amount of meth heads, though. Um, but <laughs> but I like Tacoma. Um, I, uh, I, I really enjoy. Um, I, I've never lived there. I've just had a ton of friends who have lived in Tacoma. And um and I'm really I'm I'm turning into a big fan of Tacoma these days because uh, Seattle is so expensive and so gentrified and so full of tech workers um, from around the country. And I I'm about to get on a soapbox, but the cultural shift that Seattle has seen thanks to the influx of tech workers is absolutely disturbing to me. Not to mention the amount of wasteful money and. It, Seattle's turning into a bit of a hellhole. And so Tacoma, while also a hellhole, it's a different kind of hellhole. And it's way more my scene of a hellhole than what Seattle has evolved into. So there you go. Kulika, 1965. All right. Coming in with the answers I was looking for. Males roam further, especially when not neutered. Females stay close and maintain the hunting area. Okay, there we go. I knew that there was a gender difference. I just couldn't remember, um, couldn't remember the details. And it, that totally makes sense that the males, especially the unneutered ones, roam further. Um, yeah. So, so uh, Andre, you just looked. They got a pinball bar, Hawaiian restaurant in the mission called Outer Orbit. What? 
a pinball bar, Hawaiian restaurant. Uh, so Andre, I hear you have a second house. Um, any chance I can move into that second house? Which house is closer to outer orbit? A pinball bar with a Hawaiian restaurant. That's where you'll find me. That is, uh, that's, that's where you'll find me. Yeah, I'm, I've, I'm moving to Oakland, everyone. Just so you know. No, not Oakland. I'm glad it's what, in the mission? I'm moving to the mission district, everyone. I, I'm packing it up. The stream's over. We're done. Done. Stream's over. I'm moving to the mission. Pinball bar, Hawaiian restaurant. That is where you'll find me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so let's see here. Um, yeah, exactly, Terry. How can you get more than naked? You, right. What? You want me to peel my skin off? I'm so flipping hot. I'll peel my skin off. That's what I'm talking about. It is a dangerous mental condition because you start thinking things like, maybe if I took my skin off, I won't be so hot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, vomiting goose, you'd rather have the classic mac salad over the noodles any day. I can appreciate that logic to a degree. However, I had some mac salad the other day at, um, at a place called Grillbird, and it's sort of a, it's sort of a teriyaki slash plate lunch slash um, halal joint. It's, it's a unique thing. Anyway, they serve what they refer to as Hawaiian style mac salad. And it was the most disgusting thing I've ever had in my life. Um, it was made with Japanese style mayo, which is way too much like Miracle Whip than I can handle. And classic Hawaiian style Mac salad uses best foods, period. End of story. Fight me if you disagree. Um, but this was not this was not best foods. This was probably QP. But there was like gallons of it. You know, they didn't even use a little bit of milk to thin it out. It was just this gloppy. I mean, I never honest, honestly, until that moment, I never thought there was ever such a thing as too much mayonnaise in a mac salad. You can actually put too much mayonnaise in a mac salad. You actually can. And this place, Grillbird, oh, oh they did it. Now, don't get me wrong. The um, what is it? The Ebi Ebi sandwich, the Ebu's with well, the the shrimp sandwich, the Ebi Sando that they have, very delicious. But do not ever get the Mac salad at that place. It's gross, um, gross, gross, gross. Um, yeah, um, Andre, yeah, everything you're saying about that outer orbit sounds good. Let's go there. Yep, let's go there. Um, <clears throat> exactly, <laughs> Cindy Krause. Shrimp is good like bacon. You can't have too much. I agree. I agree. Well, you you can, but you only realize that you've had too much, like, way too late. You know, you're just like, oh, that was too much. Let me just get one more. <laughs> um, so, oh, Andre, you're discovering all sorts of gourmet Hawaiian restaurants in San Francisco. You thought it was only Roy's um, that was that way. All right. Yeah, no. Yeah, actually, we've got... um. Uh, Sam Choi's place up in downtown Seattle. I've never been there, um, but Sam Choi actually even has a, a food truck in Seattle, which I was going to go to a while ago, but I didn't have the money. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so vomiting gook, that's one of the reasons you want to raise pigs. so You can do a below ground cook once a year. Another benefit of having Hawaiian roommate is getting taught how to cook them properly, except for the part where you had to stay up all night <laughs> with them in the Oregon weather. Yeah, that can be... Yeah, yeah. But the emu, though, yeah, you gotta, um, you gotta, um, yeah, you gotta cook them right underground with the, with the hot rocks and all the, all the leaves and the burlap and the, uh -huh, the whole nine. Yes, yes, yes. Um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, the earth ovens, that's not just um, that. I don't. The, so Andre says they use earth ovens to cook whole pig in the Yucatan as well. I'm pretty sure that Hawaii is not the only place that does the in ground in ground cooking. Um, not at all surprised to learn that that the Yucatan has that. In fact, you know, the, I wouldn't be surprised if the Yucatan um, and Hawaii have some similar cooking techniques. What with the abundance of banana leaves and the like, you know. So, um, uh, yeah, exactly, Darlene. There's a way to make a good mac salad, and not all places have that down. That is exactly it. Um, 
Yeah. Um, and no, and vomiting goose. I knew exactly when you said yuck. I was like, yep, he's talking about the mayonnaise. Yeah, it was just gross because the, the thing the, for for me, at least uh, the trick to a nice, silky Hawaiian style mac salad is you need to use a couple teaspoons, a couple tablespoons of milk to like thin out the mayo. So the mayo still coats everything, but it's not like gloppy. Um, and they clearly forgot the milk. I mean, they got, they forgot, they, they did not get the milk memo. Um, oh no, Andre, you're without sound. You're missing a lot of what's going on. Yeah. We're, well, we're just talking about Max salad now and what makes a good one, but you know, it is six 30. So I think it's going to be time to wind this up. However, Bear Belly's talking about how hungry she is eating Kirkland chocolate deluxe cookie assortment Christmas gift. Well, that sounds almost as good as bacon or shrimp. So careful, careful. Don't um, don't eat too much. But remember, too much is never enough. That <laughs> yeah, I cockroached that from MTV. Um, let's see here. Use a dash of rose water in your pork and mac salad. Interesting. I've I've never um, I don't. Yeah, I don't think I've ever eaten anything with rose water in it. Um, and I know that that it, rose water is uh, an old, old seasoning and it's coming back. Uh, hmm. Rose water in mac salad. Well, that's an interesting one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to ponder that one. Uh, but since I don't have any idea what rose water tastes like, I suppose I can't make too much judgments, right? Um, rose water and rum go well together, usually. Okay. Um, Turkish delight has rose water usually. Well, I don't know if I've ever had a Turkish delight, so I cannot, I cannot say. Yeah. All right then. Um, <laughs> yeah, I figured rose water had a floral taste. Um, oh, you meant coleslaw, Darlene. Oh yeah. Well, coleslaw, <laughs> that's a whole other bag of beans. Um, or that's a whole other bag of cabbage, I guess is what that is. Um, so, okay. So how about this? Actually, you know what? This is really good. How about this guys? We are going to, um, we are going to wrap this up, but if we meet again on Wednesday for Chatter with Statter, 5 p.m. West Coast time on Twitch, 3 p.m. Hawaiian time, 8 p.m. on the East Coast. If we meet again, let's talk about coleslaw. And yeah, exactly, Vomiting Goose. I'm not a real big fan of coleslaw myself. It takes a special, it's a lot of if, ands, or buts when it comes to coleslaw. And so, um, yeah, there we go. Let's talk about coleslaw. And um, Andre, I think that what you said is hysterical about rose water sounding so Middle Eastern, but then you bring up pork and it throws it all off. That's a very good point. That is a very good point. <laughs> And, oh, they make rosewater ice cream? I didn't know that, but I do know that in the Philippines they have fish-flavored ice cream, and I don't want to try that. And I know that sounds judgmental, but I'm just telling you right now, I'm not – I, I don't want to try fish-flavored ice cream. So there you have it, Rabbit. That's what we're going to end on, coleslaw and fish-flavored ice cream. <laughs> and you're right, Darlene, 7 p.m. Central Time. Um <laughs> So, e-music, you just made coleslaw. Good, 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 good. Well, you know, you guys, like, tell us your secrets because I've heard of a bunch of different ways to make coleslaw, some of which apparently have mustard in them, which threw my brain for a loop because I didn't think that coleslaw had mustard in it at all. So, um... So yeah, thank you guys so much for coming and hopefully we can carry on this conversation about coleslaw and mustard and rose water and all those and everything in between, right? <laughs> Fantastic. Awesome. So um, the best way to make coleslaw is in the trash and then leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you don't put it in the trash. You just give it to everybody else who likes it. You you share it. It's called sharing. I'm sharing mine. Sharing mine with everybody. Everybody. <laughs> And thank you so much for hanging out so we could share time tonight. I had a great time. I hope everyone else did too. And like I said, I will see you on Wednesday. And if I uh, get to catch you guys on Tuesday at the Daily Pigeon Live, 5 p.m. West Coast time, 3 p.m. Hawaiian time, I hope to see you there too. Until then, have yourself an excellent weekend, a cozy night, and I will see you soon. Take care, y'all. <laughs>